Nowadays, usually all it takes for manga to take off is a really good anime adaptation. Currently, Jujutsu Kaisen is now what is being talked about, while Record of Ragnarok and Chainsaw Man recently got greenlit for an anime adaptation, and I pray for those to not suck, because honestly, it's really make it or break it sometimes. Do I need to bring up the 2016 Berserk anime adaptation? Ugh, god. I actually still remember when the first season of Attack on Titan got dropped and how big it became. Now we are in the final season and it's blowing up all over again. Except you know some hate on MAPPA due to the CGI, which is not even that bad. Again, look at Berserk. But there's nothing that exemplifies this effect more than Demon Slayer. Without a doubt, this was the most talked about anime for a while. It even won anime of the year for 2020. Now people like to debate whether or not it's made things too affordable that Demon Slayer got to where it is today. Because not only did Demon Slayer get a full 26 episode season, when most anime these days only get 12, not only did it get a sequel film, but that film became Japan's highest grossing film of all time, beating out Spirited Away. And on top of that, due to the anime success, the manga even outsold One Piece this year as well. And to be fair, it's not a stretch to say that anything that Ufotable touches turns into gold, but this video is not going to be about the anime. There are already plenty of people talking about how amazing it is. No, this video is going to be about Koyoharu Gotoge, the writer and illustrator for Demon Slayer. Koyoharu Gotoge is a Japanese manga artist who, prior to Demon Slayer, worked on a handful of one-shots, such as Kagadi Gadi, Monju Shiro Kyodai, Rokotsu-san, and Hayaneo no Zigzag. Now, Kagadi Gadi in particular was actually sort of a baseline for what would later become Demon Slayer in 2016. The story of Demon Slayer is set in the Taisho era of Japan, which I will explain its importance later, and its protagonist, Tanjiro Kamado, is a boy who one day finds his entire family wiped out to the hands of a demon, and on top of that his sister, Nesuko, got turned into one as well. While violent at first, she turns out to be a bit different from the other flesh-eating demons due to her not instinctively always wanting to eat people. Determined that he could find a cure for his sister, he is directed by Gyu Tomioka, a demon slayer to find a man that could teach him the ways of slaying demons in the hopes of being able to not only turn his sister back to being human, but to find the one responsible for the slaughter of his family. Now I've read the story back to front about twice now and I could go all day talking about the pacing and even the ending, but then again, that is what other YouTubers are for. I'm going to, of course, take a look at his ink to work, then his color work while dissecting and taking note of things that I find interesting. Off the bat, one thing that I noticed from his ink work is how sharp, jagged, and geometric the art is. You can see that in the folds, hands, and even in the hair. The line strokes aren't really smoothly curved, but rather segmented. On top of that, he seems to frequently go over black areas with white ink to add more details like in the hair and clothing. To me, this along with the geometric line work sort of gives off the Japanese woodblock printing style, which is a fitting aesthetic. And speaking of aesthetics, I really like the details in the Haori slash Jinbei coats he draws from multiple characters. While not the most intricate, and I'm pretty sure some of these are just added on screen tones, he has a unique design exclusive to the character. For example, Tanjiro's checkered coat design, and Shinobu's coat with a butterfly wing pattern. Even Muzan's design is pretty unique, since you see no one else rocking what he's got. At first the white fedora, the black tuxedo, it all seemed a bit out of place for me. But that's why the time period is important to the overall design for this manga. As I mentioned earlier, the story takes place during the Taisho era, which is right after the Meiji era when Japan had promoted widespread westernization, which included clothing, technology, and city structure. This is important to note because it explains why these advancements are here, like the city Tanjiro goes to, or even the steam engine. If you aren't paying attention, you might forget this, especially with a lot of traditional elements largely still being at play during this time. Hell, even when we get to the steam engine, Tanjiro and Inosuke has no idea what it is, so you know that these advancements are still pretty recent. Well, that and the fact that these two are sort of the mounting dueling type of people. So yeah, the time period plays a part in why Muzan dresses the way he does. He's trying to keep up with the times. And speaking of Muzan, the designs for the demons are pretty good too. The designs get very surreal and wacky, and some of them, oh my god, look freaky, Jesus. And is it me, or does the design for Agza remind anyone of the protagonist for Shin Megumi Tensei Nocturne, or is it just me? Another thing I want to mention are the breathing style techniques. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I won't go over how they animated them since we already know how massively animated they are, but I also have to give credit to Gotoge in how he uses these techniques and weaves them into the composition, you are guided by the direction of the sword slashes and the metaphorical elemental effects being at play. Although I do have to say, the moon breathing techniques look a bit hokey. Honestly, this looks like a razor leaf, but I'm, I'm just weird. 
Now, I think it goes without saying, but Gotogi is a traditional manga artist, and although I wasn't able to find any sort of footage of him doing artwork, you could tell from the slight paper texture from his coloring. I want to say he's using Copic markers, but as I said before, I wasn't able to find actual confirmation. From looking at the way he colors, I find that he really likes to give characters two hair colors. Nezuko, Rengoku, Shinobu, Muichiro, Mitsuri, Ushiro, the train demon, the ball demon, and there's probably much more. Now, I'm not saying that this is a bad thing, only an observation. And to be fair, this might just actually be a type of shading or rendering. He also uses very bright pastel colors. However, unlike digital art, the inherent nature of traditional media doesn't make it unpleasant for the eyes. The segment was pretty short, but other than that, his coloring is pretty aight. Overall, I feel that while the anime of Demon Slayer is quite the spectacle, I also feel that the manga, in a way, is sort of the purest form of the artist's vision. I will admit that I did not know of Demon Slayer until the anime got announced, and I only got started on the manga because I wanted to know if the source material was just as good, and I found that I was pleasantly surprised. The unique style gripped me from beginning all the way to the end. Currently, the Demon Slayer manga has ended, so you can buy the manga if you want to support Kotoge. I checked around to see if he had any blog, website, or Twitter, and I couldn't find anything. So if you guys know something, let me know. The Demon Slayer movie is not currently out where I'm living, but when it does officially release over here, you already know that I'm gonna get on that very quickly. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Hey guys, it's me. Um, finally got a, another artist analysis out. I know it's been a while since the last one, and I sort of wanted to refrain on doing any big name people until I got, you know, much more of a bigger audience, but it seemed a bit counterintuitive since I very well might need to do big name people in order for me to draw in my audience in the first place. Um, I realized that I do need to pander a bit for the YouTube algorithm to get serious momentum, so please bear with me and my monotone voice. I have been uploading at least once or twice a week, so I've been doing well on keeping that up, but I want to see if I could push it just a bit further. Editing still does take a whole lot out of me, so um, yeah, I'll see what I could do. The goal is still to break 1000 subs, and it pains me to say this because I heard that apparently saying this is proven to get results, but and I also, I never say this, but be sure to comment, like, and subscribe if you want, you know, uh, <laughs> yeah, I can't do it. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.